So even if you're not a painter, you're not an artist, but you look at something and you think, how did she do that? <laughs> so let me start with something that was done about 40 years ago. This one here. I did five of them. It's acrylic on canvas. And what I did, I mean, I don't know how the idea came to me, it just did. And so I took acrylic, acrylic paint, which is water-based, and I watered it down a lot. And I dripped it. I dripped it from the top of the painting, and then I turned it and dripped it again. So I had a grid. And grids became very important to me because it gives me a basis for what I'm going to do. And all of this, the frame of reference is me. I mean, I don't look at anything. I don't try to draw anything. It's just my inner feeling about form, color, and that. So this, you can almost see the grid yeah. if you look. Mm -hmm. And it's very uneven. It's not a drawn mm -hmm. grid. It's a trip. Mm -hmm. And that was a very much a part of the abstract expressionist movement, which occurred uh, in the 70s. <coughs> so I did five of these, and I loved doing it. I really did. Now, this one here. Uh, I used to take my husband to the Long Island Railroad, and this is Baldwin Station. So one day, and I loved geometric form, kind of architectural form, and I took my Polaroid, and we took a few pictures, and then I minimized it. You know, I got rid of everything that wasn't important, and I did a painting. This is just what it looked like, going up the stairs to the train. And I did this 40 years ago, easily 40 years ago. Now, I moved to Rockland County six and a half years ago, and when I moved here, I didn't work for <coughs> four years until Phil passed away. And then I thought it's time to start working again. But what was interesting to me is that my work was entirely different because I was different. You know, life had changed me. So this is actually the last thing I did. <coughs> this is the first. This is a prototype. I went to a place, and they had a pond, a pond of water. There was water, and there were little stones right under the surface, little oval-shaped white stones. And I loved it, and it stuck in my head. And so, I did not right away, maybe a few months later, I came back and I started to do this. This is a stream. These are the stones, but it's done in the negative. And I loved it. So, I really meant this as stones. Then I thought, why not, <clears throat> why not make bigger ones, right? So I started to make bigger ones. But they were no longer stones. They became what looked like people, robots, whatever you see. And that was, you know, that's the fun of painting. You know, if you can paint and be surprised, that's a fantastic thing. Now, uh, what else can I show you? So these are pure abstractions. They're not really abstractions. They're just not representation. Now, oh yeah, I want to show you this one. Follow me. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> I love to tell people what to do. <laughs> now, you've seen this. I think a lot of you have seen this a lot. It's an optical painting art, which became very, very popular also in the 70s. The 70s was a big decade for me. I mean, I did a lot of work 
during that period. Now, people look at this because, you know, I have it in my room, and they wonder how it's done. Actually, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and it's acrylic. What I did was make a grid very carefully with a ruler and pencil. Perfect, perfect grid. And then within the grid, I made a module. In other words, so that it looked like a block. You don't see it now because of the color. And the whole idea was to have high intensity going to low intensity, which means that I had to use complements. Complementary colors. You remember your color wheel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in this case, that faded, un unfortunately, it faded a little bit because that sort of chartreuse color should have been yellow. So yellow and purple are compl complements. Now, when you mix complements together, things start to happen. So what I did, which was kind of unusual, I had purple, I have yellow, acrylic, and I started with pure yellow. Then I added a tiny bit of purple. It immediately changed, very subtle, and then a little more, and then a little more, a little more, until there comes a, ta a time where it becomes equal in other words, you have the same amount of yellow as you do a purple. And that way you can create a non-color in the brown family, depending on the value of the colors. A brown or a gray, you get beautiful color that way, simply by mixing complements. And then I continue that way until the end. Now, all of this has to be taped. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I, I, you know, I really don't know how I did it. You use masking tape. Every form here has to be taped. Every little form. And so, not only taped, but if you just tape and then you paint next to it, the paint is going to creep under. So you can't do that. You have to seal it. And I would seal it with the side of a knife and then that's not enough. And then you have to put what is called medium. It's like a glue, almost, to seal it. So no paint could ever, ever go under it because it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. If it's not perfect, it's not good. It doesn't work. So every form that you see here, that's exactly what happens. So you deal with an exacto knife and take, and you get better at it, you get faster faster, you know, you get, just get better at it. And so uh, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And I did a number of paintings like that. Now what do I get? Fran, did, do you like baseball? Is that why you did a baseball player? Yeah. It could have been any image. I'll go with soccer player. Because <laughs> here, <laughs> like here, this is the same technique. This is exactly the same technique. However, here, I couldn't tape it, it's too small. But the grid is there, the module is there, and then I did it by hand uh, with the paint. But it was the same idea of using high intensity and low intensity until it comes to the middle and you get that beautiful effect. So it's just two colors that you're dealing with. Just two colors. Now look at the color. Color is a science. It's simply not this color looks good with this color. It's not as simple as that. If you look, just look at the diamond shape. You see the diamond shape? Where do you see it here? You lost it. It's gone. But it's not gone, it's there. It's just that the color has changed and it's just gone. Try to figure it out the diamond shape. And it's exactly the same throughout. But simply with color, it has changed. And I always found that so interesting. You know, really, it's a terrific technique. I was in a workshop 
and we were all doing these optical paintings. And most of the people, instead of using their eye of combining the two colors, they used an eyedropper. They came in with 50 and 60 bottles of paint of the different shades because they did all that at home. But that was not for me. So I simply used my eye. For the, of course, I could tell immediately if it was off and I could change it there and then. And it works because look at, look at the transparency that I get here. You see it? Simply with color. That's all it is. So you can see how interesting this is. You know, when you work like that and you get this kind of effect, it's fantastic. Now, in some of the non-objective paintings here, I should say non-representational, the fun of it, and I say this in my bio, the fun of it is to find things. You know, I find everybody sees something different. You know, oh, I see a figure. No, I see a house. Everybody sees things differently. And that's fun. I mean, why not have fun doing what you love to do, right? So if you have any questions, here I am. Hey. You know, I did this sort of thing for 40 years in museums all over, but I'm nervous here. <laughs> well, I had friends on the, this is different. First of all, I haven't done this in a long time. I'm sort of, you know, and I'm geared up. <laughs> you did great. And it's also complementary colors. Pardon me? And the little squares. They also complementary colors you use. The whole thing is done with the complement too. Oh, really? The whole thing. Yeah, I guess. You can try it. <laughs> I'm sure you know what your complementary colors are. Yes. Yeah, sure. Really. <laughs> Red and green. Blue and orange, red and green, purple and yellow. You always take one primary and you mix it with another and you get like blue and yellow. You get green, right? So green is the complement. Oh, uh, that's right. Yes. With the big one. 